In these uncertain times of communist aggression, freedom must always remain vigilant. Yesterday, our forces held off a communist attack against the Space Center. But today, we must rise up to face new challenges. I am Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. In our quest for technological supremacy, our engineers are attempting to build an aircraft that is able to break the sound barrier in level flight. While it is believed to be feasible to use jet engines to build an aircraft that can break the sound barrier, our engineers are thinking that using a rocket plane will be the simplest solution. Supersonic speeds present new challenges for controlling the aircraft. Testing has revealed that these all-moving surfaces will provide better control at transonic and supersonic speeds. These stubby wings will help minimize drag, yet provide sufficient lift at high speeds. Slightly increasing the angle of incidence on the wing will increase its lift and decrease drag caused by the fuselage. Our aerospace program is still very limited in the types of landing gear we have available, so we'll just have to make do with what we have. In order to ensure a stable flight, the center of mass needs to be in front of the center of aerodynamic pressure. To further increase stability, the engineers are trying to decrease the engine torque. They are trying to keep the center of thrust perfectly in line with the center of mass. Since this plane has been designed to be very streamlined, a parachute will be used to help the plane slow down after touching down on the runway. Now all that remains is to give this plane a catchy name and a paint job. We'll call this the Bell K-1. The pilots got together and voted on the color. They decided on orange. And if you are wondering, I am using the mod DCK to help paint the aircraft. All systems check out. Let's put Jebediah in this thing and see how fast it can go. Although officially called the Bell K-1, Jebediah has decided to call this plane the Glamorous Glenis. After racing down the runway, Jebediah pitches up and is now trying to reach 2,500 meters to break the sound barrier at the required height for the contract parameters. And on the maiden flight, this plane had no problems pushing past the sound barrier. Now all that remains is for Jebediah to glide this thing safely back to the runway. Jebediah gives just a little bit of push from his engine and is now going to glide this thing the rest of the way back. He is coming in really fast though. As long as he keeps his vertical speed slow, he should be alright. The parachute has deployed but he's running out of runway. It looks like he is going slow enough that this is not going to be much of a problem. He turns the plane around, gives it a little bit no more juice from his engine, and he's going to park this thing right at the end of the runway like a pro. Jebediah has now been the first Kerbal in orbit and the first Kerbal to break the sound barrier in level flight. The communist may have put the first satellite into orbit around Kerbin, but the space race is far from over. It looks like some VIPs want to accompany our commanders for a visit over to the island airfield. So our job is to build a craft that is capable of hauling all these guys over there. A lot of our future funding and potential contracts depends on just how well this mission goes. So we're going to really impress these Kerbals with a flight over there in a helicopter. Fortunately, our research and development has come a long way. We can now design and build a transport helicopter that can fly from the Space Center all the way over to the island airfield and return. All told, that'll be a trip of over 50 kilometers, but if we are careful with the fuel efficiency of our engines, that shouldn't be a problem. Our engineers are going with a contra-rotating design. This should be the easiest to build with our given technology levels. I have sped up this build quite a bit, as it can just take a lot of time to get all the parts aligned properly when I'm making a helicopter. If you are interested in my design process, I do have several tutorials covering how I build helicopters in the game. These control surfaces at the back of the helicopter will aid with the yaw, pitch, and roll during forward flight. Since the purpose of this helicopter is to be a transport helicopter, we'll need to make sure that we've put in plenty of seats to hold all of the VIPs in this thing. So far, this is turning out to be a pretty nice helicopter. Our program will probably use this for future missions. Currently, the helicopter needs room for seven passengers. However, in order to future-proof it, we'll add more seats than that. A craft like this would seem very useful for any contracts near the Space Center. This would also seem like a very useful craft if we had to rescue Kerbals from the oceans or the mountains near the Space Center. Tilting the rotors forward about 10 degrees makes forward flight a lot easier. The rotors need to be just behind the center of mass in order to keep the craft stable. Fuel needs to be balanced so that the center of mass doesn't shift, that way the craft will remain stable for the entire flight. 
Our KH-1 helicopter is fully assembled. All that is left is to fill it with the passengers and take it out and fulfill the mission. Jibdiah and Bill seem excited to be flying this thing. I was having issues when I tried to record this with my normal software, so I used the software that came with my graphics card. If you notice anything different about the video quality, that would be why. Since this flight is pretty simple, it involves flying from point A to point B, Jebediah will make use of the autopilot in order to avoid fatigue. In all honesty, this autopilot really made this mission actually flyable with a helicopter as opposed to needing to use a jet to get over to there quickly. The breaking ground rotor parts do not work well under physics warp, so this had to be flown in real time. But thanks to the autopilot mod, I didn't have to actually be at my computer the entire time. And now we cut away to the landing. Jebediah turns off the autopilot, decreases the collective, and pulls back on the stick in order to slow down. He's going to take things pretty gently as he attempts to land near the control tower. The excited chatter from the Kerbals in the back would seem to indicate that they are very much enjoying their first helicopter flight. Jebediah touches down softly onto the runway. Now Jebediah and Bill must wait for the VIPs to conduct their business before flying them home. With the visit to the island airfield concluded, Jebediah is given permission to take off and return back to the Space Center. Just like the flight there, Jebediah will make use of the autopilot to make the flight back a lot easier. I wasn't sure how well the autopilot would work with a helicopter, and was very surprised and pleased when it worked out very well. This would make helicopters a viable craft for future missions. The two fuel tanks on the top are from the mod DCK, and each hold 150 units of fuel. So based off of the fuel usage, this helicopter seems to have a range around 60 kilometers. The red icon near the hangar is where Jebediah needs to land to fulfill this contract. And again, he is coming in smooth and gentle. Hopefully these VIPs are thoroughly impressed and more lucrative flight contracts will be in our future. We can use the funds earned on this mission to upgrade some of our facilities, such as the launch pad, the vehicle assembly building, and the tracking station. Now that mission control and the tracking station have been upgraded, we'll be able to make maneuver notes. Our program is now tasked with sending a probe to fly by the MUN. Some investments in science will help us upgrade our engines. These new Terrier engines are just the thing for longer range missions, and these larger fuel tanks should simplify craft design. A main goal for this mission is to conduct as much science as possible, so this craft will be filled to the brim with experiments. Not only will this craft be flying near the MUN, it will be flying in high space around Kerbin, so we'll want to gather the science from all of these different locations. In order to get the most science return out of this mission, the goal is to return this entire upper stage back to Kerbin, so we're going to need some heat shielding to protect it from the re-entry coming back from the MUN. The Science Junior is particularly sensitive to heat, so we're going to use two heat shields. The second heat shield acts as a bit of a thermal barrier so that heat is not transferred from the main one directly to the Science Junior. This upper stage should have plenty of Delta V in order to get this craft circularized around Kerbin and then transferred to the MUN and back to Kerbin. Our science is limited and we have no means of recharging these batteries on the upper stage, so we're going to make sure that we have sufficient electrical power to complete the mission. For better control over the craft, the lower stage will also use liquid fuel. But instead of using the Terrier, which is really a vacuum engine, the lower stage will use the Swivel, which is able to gimbal, so the gimbal of the rocket engine will be the primary means of control during ascent. The front of the rocket isn't very aerodynamic. So, multiple fins are going to be used on the back to keep the craft stable during ascent. And this should take care of the stability on the lower stage. These fins should take care of any stability issues on the lower stage. However, the upper stage that needs to return back to Kerbin needs to be reviewed to make sure that no parts are sticking out past the heat shield. Any sensitive parts sticking out past the heat shield risk overheating and being destroyed during re-entry. So the engineers are rearranging things just a little bit to ensure that that doesn't happen. The return stage appears to be well put together. The lower stage should get the craft up to around 25 kilometers in altitude. At that altitude though, the upper stage will still need some fins in order to maintain stability, so we should add a few fins to that as well. The Terrier engine does not have much in the way of gimbal, so much of the attitude control will come from the reaction wheels located in the probe core itself. And we have liftoff of the Kanki rocket, 
it is on its way to take a probe on a flyby of our nearest neighbor, the Mun. Scientists and engineers everywhere are excited about the potential science returns from this mission as no craft has ever flown this close to the Mun before. Stage separation is clean and the second stage is now powering this craft the rest of the way into orbit. The craft now coasts as it's approaching its second burn in order to circularize around the planet. It'll take about 300 meters per second of delta V to put this craft into orbit. That'll leave enough delta V left for a free return trajectory mission to the Mun and back to Kerbin. Mission Control carefully plots an ejection burn from Kerbin so that as the craft flies by the Mun, the Mun's gravity will alter its course and the craft will then return back into Kerbin's atmosphere. A benefit to using a free return trajectory is that even if the scientists were to lose control of the craft, it would still return to Kerbin without any more guidance. Valuable science is gained from space high above Kerbin, and now in space high above the Mun. The invaluable data gained during this mission should push our science program even further. The flyby of the Mun is complete, now the craft is returning back to Kerbin. The last remaining fuel will be used to slow the craft down just a little bit more before it hits the atmosphere. This ended up taking about four aerobraking braking passes, so I just cut that out and show you the landing. The craft slams into the atmosphere at over 3,000 meters per second. However, the heat shields do their job. The craft is now traveling at subsonic speeds, so the parachute can safely deploy. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network has proven itself once again. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War.